In this video, I'm gonna show you how to never get lost in your open Vim buffers ever again. Today, we're talking about Vim marks, what they are, what problem they solve, and how I like to use them. So, let's go. Pretty frequently, you'll find yourself in the case where you're working in some section of code, maybe it's some function, and then you branch off to work with some supporting code, maybe you're investigating some other code around it, and then you wanna get back to where you were before. Normally you have a few options. You can use control I and control O to step backwards through your jump list and eventually get back to where you were. Sometimes we can see, okay, uh, our line number is 28. So if we go down here, we navigate a little bit afterwards, we remember, and we jump back to line 28. This can work, but when we add some lines above, we're gonna find out that now if we go to line 28, it's no longer where we previously were. And if you're only jumping back to one place, maybe you can remember a line number, but once you're juggling a couple, that probably just goes out the window. And you might also try searching for a function or a variable name to get back to where you were, but unless it's something very specific, it's probably gonna be messy. You're gonna get false positives. Trying to rely on jumping to a line number or a search is also only gonna work within one buffer. As soon as you're working with multiple buffers, this goes out the window. And so this is where Vim marks come in. Marks allow you to tag a specific spot in any buffer and jump back to it instantly. You just hit M and any letter to mark this spot. And then from anywhere else in your buffer, you can use the single quote and the letter to jump back to that line. You can also use the back tick and that letter to jump to the column as well. Each open buffer will have its own list of 26 lowercase letter marks. So we can be in the tests and use the mark A without affecting this mark A in our main buffer. And you can work with marks across different files by using any capital name. So in this case, we're gonna use capital A. We're in our test and we can jump back to it using capital A. What's cool is that these marks are pretty context aware, so we can drop in some more changes that would bump this line number down. And when we use our mark to go back, it actually takes us to where we wanna be, not just the line number. What's also cool is that we can exit Vim, open it back up, and jump straight back to our mark. As long as you have shared data enabled, which should be the default for Vim and NeoVim, you're good to go. You can use the marks command to see a list of your marks or del mark to delete a mark, but generally you're not gonna worry about that. You're just gonna have a few marks that you use. So you can probably rely on A, S, D, F and have a single mark for each finger in your left hand, or I personally just use A, B, C. There are also some special marks that Vim keeps track of on its own while you're doing your thing. And this is actually what powers a few features. So if you've ever highlighted some lines and gone into command mode, you've probably seen the single quote and the open, close, angle brackets here. And these are actually just two marks that represent the start and end of your visual selection. One way I use these all the time is if you're making a change where you know you're about to jump somewhere else in the file or a different buffer and then come right back to where you are. I think of this as dropping an anchor before you make some other changes. So we're going to update some code here that is gonna require us to update the aliases at the top of the file. We're gonna drop our mark A, jump to the top of the file, paragraph down, paste in our changes, and jump right back to where we were. Another way I like to use this is using one mark for some code that you're changing and another mark for the related code that you need to change. This could be the test or the call site. So here we are working with this code. We're gonna drop a capital A. We're gonna go to our test here. We're gonna drop a capital B here. And now we can very easily jump between the function and the test that we're working on in tandem. Mostly I just rely on the single quote version just to get back to the line I was looking at. But sometimes you do need to jump back to the exact column you were at and I find this really helpful in macros. Here we're gonna record a little macro to refactor this function signature. Right now this is accepting a three element tuple. What we wanna do is just break this down so it's accepting three separate arguments. We want it to be applicable to both the definitions and the call site. We're gonna hit QA to start recording our macro jump to our opening brace here. And what we wanna do is drop our mark, jump to the corresponding closing brace using percent. We can now delete that and use back tick A to jump back to our opening brace 
delete that, and we're good to go. And you can see it applies not only here, but here as well. This is a super simple way to make a macro that much less brittle. All right, there you have it. Marks are one of my favorite quality of life features. It's just one of those little things that makes editing in Vim hard to beat. As always, cheat sheet in the description below. Peace.